Okay, good after good I was gonna say good afternoon. I tell you when you when you've worked for any number of years in the business and now all of a sudden you're thrust into a completely different situation. Good evening, everybody. Uh, meteorologist Joe Rayo here from the uh, old home base here in Putnam County. It is uh, on my watch, 826, and uh, we're going to give you a, a weather update this evening. But I'm coming on a little late this evening to also update you on the um, uh, situation regarding the meteor outburst, the Alpha Monoceratids meteor shower that has been forecast to happen uh, this evening. A very special weather event, uh, actually a very special astronomical event. Um, although it has the word meteor in the fork in the uh, in the name, meteor refers to things that are up in the air, um, clouds, rain, lightning, thunder. That's up in the air, but this is way up in the air. Meteors, these tiny little particles, uh, these little bits of debris that are going to crash into our atmosphere uh, sometime later this evening. Again, I'll get into that in just a moment. We're also going to be talking about the weather for the next few days, and uh, also we're going to be talking about uh, Thanksgiving. A lot of people here are uh, wondering about the weather for next week, uh, Wednesday, getaway day, and also Thursday, uh, the big holiday. Can't believe it. It's, it's over, already a week away now. Only a week away is Thanksgiving, and then officially uh, the winter uh, holiday season begins, albeit the fact that a number of radio stations have already begun broadcasting 24-7 Christmas music. They kind of jumped over the holiday. Uh, the turkeys have a lot to be upset about that they've already been bypassed for the Christmas holiday season. I saw a commercial today talking about tomorrow being Black Friday. Of course, the real Black Friday is a week from tomorrow, but you know, these, uh, these uh, stores, they just jump the gun and uh, um, the, you know, the one thing I like about the fact that this year we're having Thanksgiving on November the 28th, this is as late as Thanksgiving can come. And as a result, they do not light the big Christmas tree at Rockefeller Center until the Wednesday after Thanksgiving. That means that we're talking about um, uh, next uh, week from this uh, week from uh, a couple of days now. Oh, I see that. My phone is ringing and it's my son. Who's, who's calling. My wife is answering it upstairs, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, the fact that, that Thanksgiving comes so late this year and the fact that uh, they don't light the big uh, tree at Rockefeller Center, the Christmas tree, until the Wednesday following Thanksgiving means that the lighting of the tree this year comes as late as it can come, which would be December the 4th. And I, I'm, I'm happy about that. I don't know about any of you, but uh, to me, if they light the tree before even December begins, that doesn't work for me. I come from a time when they did not light the Christmas tree at Rockefeller Center until I think something like any time between the, the 7th and 12th of December. My sister, uh, her birthday is on December the 8th, and I can remember not a few Christmases back when we were growing up in the Bronx where they would light the tree on her birthday, the 8th of December. Now, oh my goodness, the 8th of December, that's much too late. We have to light it a lot sooner. <laughs> I predict that you know maybe 20, 25 years from now they'll be starting starting to light the tree uh, or put put the tree up around Halloween and start lighting it shortly thereafter. Anyway, let's get quickly to the weather. Um, we have a partly to mostly cloudy uh, sky uh, expected during the overnight, which is not good for watching this spectacular. Uh, meteor display that has been promised by some of the uh, meteor experts for later tonight. Um, however. Uh, I have been looking at some of the short-term uh, models, the, uh, the um, RPM model, the HRRR model. These models are all suggesting that there may actually be some gaps and breaks and rifts in the general cloud cover that's over our heads right now, right around the time when the meteor shower is expected to reach its maximum. Now, let me just explain about the meteor shower. And if you don't know anything about it and want more information, you can go to my Facebook page, Joe Rayo Weather on Facebook, and I've just posted a whole explanation about it, plus a, a picture of the last time this particular display flared up in 1995. Um, this is a meteor shower that doesn't come around too often. Unlike the annual showers like the, the Perseid meteor shower, which is well known in the month of August, or the uh, cold weather December Geminid shower, which happens in mid-December, both very reliable. They come back every year and they put on a pretty good display. This particular shower, the uh, Alpha Monocetarids, 
This shower is a very periodic shower. It has only appeared four times over the last 100 years. The uh, best explanation is that there was a comet that came on through the inner part of the solar system. Uh, the comet has a period roughly five to 600 years. So about every five or 600 years, this comet sweeps around the sun. We've never seen it. We have never seen this comet before. But the circ circumstantial evidence that the comet exists is in the trail of debris that it leaves behind as it sweeps around the sun. This river of rubble, if you will, composed mostly of tiny little grains of dust, little clods, no bigger than a, the size of a pea, most the size of copier toner. They sweep behind the comet after the comet has passed around the sun, sweep along the trail of the comet, and every once in a while, the Earth wanders into this trail of debris. It doesn't last too very uh, for very long. In fact, the four of the times that this has happened, in 1925, 1935, 1985, 1995, the four of the times that this event has taken place, the total length of time of the meteor display lasted less than an hour. So this must be a very narrow stream of debris that we encounter. But when we do encounter it, the meteors are pretty well, quite, quite prolific. It is possible around the time when the shower reaches its peak that you might see in a span of only a few minutes, dozens of shooting stars shooting out from a particular part of the sky, which in this case tonight is from the dull and dim constellation of Monoceros, the unicorn. I've actually seen news releases saying that uh, this is being called the unicorn meteor shower uh, because people, I guess, can't uh, possibly um, uh, uh, pronounce correctly Monoceros or the Monoceratids shower. This is the name of the shower. I think it's, it, it doesn't really matter what you call them. What is important is, is that according to the calculations, suddenly, almost like opening a spigot, so to speak, the time when we begin to encounter this thin trail of debris will be at 11.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. And slowly but surely, we run through this stream. We reach the, the core of the stream, the, the spot in the narrow trail, which is densest and thickest with, uh, or most populated with um, dusty debris, right smack in the middle. That will be occurring at 11.50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then just as quickly, and as I said, it's like opening a spigot and then very quickly closing a spigot at about 12.10, it should be all, all but done. So I'm talking about 40 minutes. Now you could sit outside in the summertime in your lounge chair and look up and you could watch for hours the Perseid meteor shower. They run right through the entire night from midnight until the first light of dawn. Same thing with the Geminid shower from sunrise, action, from sunset to sunrise, the entire night in mid-December on the peak of the shower of the uh, Geminids, you could watch for meteors. This is not the case this time. This is going to be no more or no longer than 40 minutes starting at 11.30, peaking at 11.50, and then completely shutting down by 12.10 a.m. late tonight. So you got that 40-minute window. Where do you look? The best place to look, you don't even have to know the constellations, okay? Those of you who do know the constellations, you could look toward the constellation of Orion with his three-star belt and his uh, four bright stars marking his body, his torso. Very easy constellation to see. But again, you don't even need to know that. All you need to do is to go outside beginning at 1130, look directly up and face toward the east-southeast part of the sky. And if this shower does indeed come to fruition, if the scientists who have uh, the meteor uh, experts who say this is going to happen tonight, if it does happen, then soon after 1130, you'll start seeing meteors. You might see a couple of them initially, and supposedly it will build up to a point where you might be seeing meteors coming at the rate of you know, three or four, five, even six per minute around 11.50 tonight. A couple of disclaimers. Make sure if you're going to look for meteors, well, three disclaimers, actually. The first disclaimer is you have to be in an area where it's nice and dark. If you are living in an area where there's a lot of street lights, or if you live near, let's say, a strip mall or a place where uh, a parking lot that has lots of those big security lights, you're not going to see much of anything. You got to get to a spot where it is nice and dark and where you can see at least a reasonable number of stars. Number two, get away from a spot where there's a lot of tall trees or a lot of tall buildings. The more 
buildings and trees and obstructions to visibility of your sky, the fewer meteors you're going to see. Some of them may be occurring behind the tree or behind the building. So try to get to an area that's wide open with a nice wide view of the sky and in a nice dark area away from any bright lights and you will have your best shot at seeing at least a few shooting stars. You know, I'm, again, I'm not gonna promise you a specific number, but if you wanna see a, a fairly nice number in a relatively short interval of time, this will be the situation for tonight to try to do this. The other possibility, of course, is being completely clouded out or schmutzed out. Now, right now in the immediate tri-state area, we have what I'm calling a layer of, uh, of schmutz. We have mid and uh, low level cloud cover covering our skies and uh, not a single star is visible, at least outside from my house. So you say to yourself, well, Joe, why are you making such a big fuss about this if the weather is so terrible outside to look for stars or shooting stars? The thing is that some of the short-term models are suggesting that by midnight, we will have good breaks in the cloud cover in parts of the tri-state area. I cannot tell you where because unfortunately the models are not that precise, but they are all suggesting, the short-term models are, that by midnight when this shower is reaching its peak, some parts of the tri-state area will have nice large gaps, breaks in the cloud cover, holes in the cloud cover where you might be able to see some stars and hopefully in that time frame you'll be able to see some meteors. So some of you may be happy and uh, get lucky and get a fortuitous hole over your neighborhood to see these shooting stars. In other cases, it may not be so lucky for others that the cloud cover will hold firm and you won't, you'll won't you be deprived or denied of seeing anything tonight. Uh, that's the way it goes sometimes when you're you know looking for uh, astronomical or celestial events. I remember one of the greatest disappointments in my life was in 1966 for the Leonid meteor shower when the uh, local TV weather people People like uh, Dr. Frank Field and Tex Antoine, and um, on Channel 2, they had, uh, I believe, uh, uh, Gordon Barnes. They're, these are names from out of the past where they promised that it would be no worse than partly cloudy. And I, I was a very young boy at that time, watched them, listened to them, believed them. <laughs> and then when I went outside at the appointed hour later that night after midnight, totally overcast. And I got very upset that... Uh, I was led astray by uh, the forecast. I mean, they promised partly cloudy. It was mostly cloudy. I, I started, to, you know, I looked at my grandfather who was out with me and I said, Grandpa, they promised partly cloudy tonight. And my grandfather came up with a great line. He said, Joey, the partly's over. Let's go to bed. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to make up for that a little bit tonight. These are not stars that are falling out of their fixed positions in the sky. As I mentioned at the very beginning of this uh, telecast, uh, or video cast, or whatever you want to call this, that this is actually uh, a case of our passing through, again, a debris field of dust uh, and uh, tiny little particles left behind by a comet, which we have never seen before. But again, apparently it's out there. Apparently it has left this dirty trail. And every once in a great while, we intersect it and uh, see shooting stars. And we will see these little tiny pieces of material from the comet pierce our atmosphere. Uh, they'll probably begin uh, to be visible at an altitude of 80 miles above our head and disappear a second later at about 40 miles. They're traveling really fast, about 40 miles per second. Friction with the atmosphere causes these tiny little particles to be raised to white heat. You're not seeing the particle itself burn up. What you're seeing is as the particle whizzes through the atmosphere at that high speed, it heats up the air behind it and uh, those uh, atoms become what we call ionized and create a trail, an incandescent trail in the sky, which can be seen for hundreds of miles. And that is what we're looking for tonight, are these trails of, um, uh, that are being caused by these tiny little dust particles uh, that were shed by a comet. They are not stars falling out of their fixed positions in the sky, although the popular terminology is shooting or falling stars. All right, so let's hope we get a chance to see these tonight. Uh, hopefully the weather will cooperate, but if it doesn't, well, we'll just have to wait for the next sky spectacular. Partly to mostly cloudy is my forecast for tonight. Temperatures of 39 to 45. Tomorrow, we're going to probably see a lot more clouds than sun, and I'm suspecting that we're going to see a few showers around as a cold front approaches our region. In fact, I expect the cold front to be in and around our area by about oh, noon to 2 o'clock. So up until that time, 
Expect some widely scattered showers. And then after the front pushes on through, the winds will pick up out of a uh, westerly direction uh, in the afternoon, steady or sustained speeds of 10 to 15 miles an hour. Some gusts, however, stronger gusts to 25. And I'm calling for a high tomorrow in the seasonable range of 45 to 53 degrees. The sun may start breaking through later in the day tomorrow as the atmosphere begins to dry out behind the cold front. Tomorrow night, beautifully clear. Why couldn't the meteor outburst come tomorrow night when we'd be certain that everybody would have a shot at seeing them? But it will be clear tomorrow night. It will be brisk, and it's going to be cold or at least chilly. 23 in the distant uh, valley spots north and west, 33 for the urban and uh, coastal locations. Then Saturday, not a bad day at all. Lots and lots of sunshine for much of the day. Late Saturday, you'll begin to notice a buildup of high and mid-level clouds coming in from the west. Temperatures will be chillier on Saturday, though there'll be less wind, mostly in the middle 40s, 43 to 47 degrees. Come Saturday night, it's going to rain. Now, I think that if you live, let's say, north of Interstate 84, the Interstate 84 corridor in the Hudson Valley, that is where I think you might see initially a bit of sleet or ice mixing in with the rain. Somebody has sent me a message today asking me where exactly is Interstate 84, and I refuse to answer that question. If you if you want to know where Interstate 84 is, go online and call up a, a road atlas or something. Generally speaking, it's in extreme northeastern uh, Putnam County, extreme northern sections of Orange County, anywhere north of there. That is where I think it'll be cold enough initially on Saturday, say after about 8, 9, 10 o'clock, for the first shot of precipitation to come mixed with or fall as a little bit of sleet or ice. But even up there, it's probably going to turn over or change over to mostly rain. So a rainy Saturday night, it looks like it'll be a rainy day for at least the first part of Sunday. Uh, I've heard uh, reports or other forecasts saying that it might change over to snow before ending on Sunday later in the day. I'm not quite frankly uh, uh, would agree on that. I, I think that once it goes over to rain, it pretty much is going to stay rain. We'll see how it all pans out. But I think Sunday, we're going to see temperatures actually climb through the 40s to even near 50 before the end of the day. Uh, Monday and Tuesday look great. Lots of sunshine. Around 50 Monday, low to mid 50s on Tuesday. And then we get to Wednesday and Thursday, which again is going to be um, problematic. Wednesday, of course, is going to be um, is going to be a getaway day for many people, one of the most traveled days of the year. Everybody wants to head to grandma's house for Thanksgiving on Thursday. And I think that Thursday, uh, Wednesday, I should say, will be somewhat problematic. We've got three different possibilities here. Um, both the Canadian model and the European model are both suggesting that we're going to be seeing uh, wet weather in the form of some showers on Wednesday, especially early in the day. And the, the precipitation may actually be over with, according to those two models, by late in the day on Wednesday. The GFS, the American model, this is very interesting. You look at the GFS for next Wednesday, it says that all the precipitation will pass on by mostly to our north early in the day. We may not see a drop. The GFS is alluding to a dry day on Wednesday in contrast to its Canadian and European cousin, uh, which uh, both are suggesting that we may get some showery weather on Wednesday. So right now it may look a, a little unsettled for Wednesday, and if it does, happen. It may be mostly in the early and mid part of the day on Wednesday with some improvement coming later in the day on getaway day Wednesday. That's good because, you know, by a rush hour Wednesday afternoon and evening, a lot of folks will be hitting the road maybe even earlier uh, for the holiday on Thursday. Thursday right now, my only concern, and I just saw my uh, good buddy Joe Chiappi on his YouTube uh, site talk about this. The one thing I would be concerned about for Thursday is the wind. Um, this system that's going to be passing through on Wednesday is apparently going to amplify or get stronger uh, or deepen as it passes on by to our east and north uh, Wednesday night into Thursday to a degree that by Thursday we may be looking at a rather gusty gusty uh, west-northwesterly wind gusting maybe in excess of 25 or 30 miles an hour, and that is not good for the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Those big balloons and I don't know what it is. I, I think this is like the third or fourth time in the last five years that the wind has been an issue with the uh, with the parade and those big balloons. But it may be, again, that uh, this may be a problem for uh, flying those balloons on Thursday of next uh, week for Thanksgiving morning. 
Uh, normally, those balloons, when they when there's not much wind at all, I think fly at something like 20, 30, 40 feet above the uh, streets. But when there's a wind, a very strong, gusty wind, they literally have to pull those balloons all the way down almost to the point where they're just, you know, 10 or 15 feet above the street level uh, in order to avoid the balloons, you know, being bobbed back and forth, back and forth. You may remember, I think it was about 15 or 20 years ago, one of those balloons actually hit a, uh, a street light, caused the street light to, you know, uh, cave in or get knocked off a bit. And it actually fell in and hit one of the uh, people who, who was watching the parade, injuring that person. So it's very, very important that uh, if they're going to have any kind of significant winds, that uh, they bring the, either bring those balloons down. I remember one year, 1971, uh, Thanksgiving of 1971, it was very windy, and uh, so much so that they actually just canceled the whole, they didn't cancel the parade, they just canceled, you know, flying the balloons. I think they may have inflated them near the Museum of Natural History the night before, but the winds were so fierce on the morning of the parade that they just said, look, this isn't going to work, and they just never flew them down uh, down through the parade that year. And I think it was the last year they did that was 1971. Let's hope it doesn't get to that point next Thursday. But again, that's my main concern for Thanksgiving this year is the wind. I think Thursday itself will turn out to be a sunny to partly cloudy day and chillier, whereas on Wednesday it may be in the mid-50s. Thursday it'll be in the mid-40s. And of course, if it's very windy, that mid-40 temperature may feel more like uh, mid-30. So uh, we'll see how that all pans out. My goodness. Holy moly. Look at all these people that just came on. <laughs> we have Bobbing, Bobby Livingsworth. Good evening, Joe. I will awake at 4 a.m. to check things, and then I will go back to rest at 6 a.m. for a bit. Well, I don't know why you would wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning, Bobby, but uh, go right ahead and uh, do it if that's what you care to do. It's not for the meteor shower. Again, I want to stress, if it's the meteor shower that you're hoping to see, it's going to be only for about 40 minutes at most, and it starts at 1130 and runs till 1210. This is not like most other meteor showers where you sometimes have to get up at 4 a.m. to look. Um, this is a case where uh, we got a shot, uh, well, just about um, about uh, three hours from this from the time we're making this, this tape to see whether or not uh, those of you have clear weather or cloudy weather. Um, let's see who else is here. Johnny Quest. Hi, Johnny. I recognize you from... Uh, from uh, Joe's uh, live streams, Danny uh, Dan Kumar. Thank you, Danny. Uh, let's see. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I'm just looking down the list here of all these people. Timothy Veltman. Thank you, T Timothy, for coming on. Um, and um, bum. Uh, Bobby Livingsworth again. And Dennis Cassia. Hi, Dennis. How are you? I invited Dennis over to the house tonight. <laughs> to, to do meteor watching, but uh, with the weather so much in question now, whether we're going to have clouds or a bit of clear clear sky, uh, probably be better if we just stayed put at our own respective uh, home bases. Um, and yeah, I my goodness, all these people suddenly coming online here. Look, uh, spread the word, folks. Uh, we I have uh, at last count about three hundred and some odd of subscribers, and it'd be nice to get that number over a thousand. I'll try to make more. Uh, of these uh, uh, discussions available, and I'm hopefully going to figure out how to do OBS so that I can put up some graphics, uh, as Joe does, uh, some weather graphics to uh, talk about, uh, you know, or show you things as I'm talking about them weather-wise. But right now, I'm just in the very beginning stages of this. Uh, of course, as you know, my last day at uh, and Joe's last day at Fios One was just over a week ago, and so now with me at home, uh, I've got to figure out you know, what to do. And one of these is to do these uh, uh, live casts and live streams on Facebook and on YouTube. And uh, uh, so you'll be seeing more of me, I'm sure, in the uh, days and weeks to come. All right. So that I'm going to close it down. We'll see how everything pans out tonight for the meteors. Tomorrow, again, watch out for a few showers, especially in the first part of the day. Saturday looks like a good day weather-wise, although it'll be a bit chillier. And uh, then we'll get wet, I think, Saturday night into a good part of Sunday. And then we'll dry out for Monday and Tuesday. We may have a few showers to deal with for getaway day Wednesday. And then Thanksgiving again, there she blows. We may have to deal with a, a wind problem for Thanksgiving and for the balloons for the parade early in the day on Thursday. Thank you so much for all of you who have tuned in. And I'm, I'll post this also on my uh, Facebook pages for those of you who are looking 
uh, after the fact. Um, we'll be uh, showing a rerun of this on uh, on my uh, Facebook page. And um, what else can I say except good luck tonight with the meteors, and we'll try and be on the air tomorrow, if not here, then on Facebook, and I'll post uh, some kind of announcement in advance so that you'll be ready and aware for that. Maybe I might, you know what I might do, since Joe probably will not do his regular uh, YouTube discussion tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Uh, I think he said he's going to be on the road and makes it difficult for him to be on the on the air tomorrow night. Maybe in his place, I'll go come on on Facebook, uh, on YouTube tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. So we'll make it a, a tentative date tomorrow night at 7 uh, for uh, for YouTube right here at uh, the uh, at Rancho Rejo, the home base here in uh, Putnam County. You have a good one, everybody. Good luck tonight and have a great Friday.